Hello everybody, this is Pastor Bill Dalthwaite at Shepherd of the Coast Lutheran Church. And it's Palm Sunday. It's a Palm Sunday different than any we've ever experienced before because we're not together with our palm crosses or our palm branches praising and worshiping our Lord. We're all at home worshiping around our tables with our families, with our Bibles and our hymnals praising and worshiping our God, who less than a week before his death humbly rode a donkey into Jerusalem. He was hailed as the son of David, the coming king. By the end of the week, they would be demanding his crucifixion. I pray that God would bless our worship together today. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. You are the King of Israel and David's royal son. Now in the Lord's name coming, our King and Blessed One. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The company of angels is praising you on high, and we with all creation in chorus make reply. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The multitude of pilgrims with palms before you went. Our praise and prayer and anthems before you we present. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. To you before your passion they sang their hymns of praise. To you now high exalted our melody we raise. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. As you received their praises, accept the prayers we bring. O source of every blessing, our good and gracious King. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King. Whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
How many times have we betrayed our Lord through our words and actions or lack thereof? How many times have we betrayed him in our thoughts? When have we viewed something that God valued as something wasteful? Let's take some time to reflect on our lives and confess our sins to God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Lord Jesus, we have sinned against you in our thoughts and with our actions and words. We have sinned against you by not speaking or taking action when we should. We confess to you that we are guilty of buying into the value system of our world and not seeing this world with your eyes. Forgive us for the times we have sold out to the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Renew and strengthen us by your Spirit, creating clean and courageous hearts designed to do your will. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ came into this world and gave up his life willingly on the cross for us to pay for our sins. And he was raised again from the dead so that we can know that we will have life with him forever. I announce his grace to you. In the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 118. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, 
it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The epistle from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sang. Through pillared court and temple, the lovely anthem rang. To Jesus who had blessed them, close folded to his breast, the children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. From Olive they followed, mid an exultant crowd, the victor palm branch waving and chanting clear and loud. The Lord of earth and heaven rode on in lowly state, nor scorned that little children should on his bidding wait. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing. For Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven, our King. Oh, may we ever praise Him with heart and life and voice, and in His blissful presence eternally rejoice. Resurrection eggs today. A green one and a purple one. In the purple, a piece of white linen. After Jesus died, two of his friends asked for his body and they wrapped his body in white cloth and they laid it in a tomb which is like a cave. That's where they put his dead body. And then they rolled a big stone in front of it so that nobody could get it in and nobody could get out. That's where they thought Jesus' body would stay. But he had a big surprise for them. Just wait till Easter morning when they went to the tomb and found it empty. Heavenly Father, thank you for your son Jesus who died on the cross and was buried in a tomb behind a big stone. They thought the story was over, but it wasn't. You're the Lord of life and death. You always have the last word. And we can't wait to celebrate your resurrection, Lord. Thanks for being our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As you and I are well aware, the world has changed dramatically in just the past few weeks. Churches, restaurants, borders, beaches are all closed. Sports, concerts, Recitals, graduations, they've all been canceled. Incredible losses of jobs, income, and investments. Hospitals, doctors, and nurses are overwhelmed with the number of people to be cared for. Who would have ever thought that something so small, the COVID-19 virus, Something that you can't see with the naked eye. It's so small, you need a microscope to see it. 
Who would have ever thought that something so small could bring communities and nations and the world to its knees? Turning to Paul's letter to the Christians at Philippi, we read about another humble person who brings the world to its knees. Listen again to these verses from chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Who would have ever thought that something as humble as our Lord Jesus Christ could bring the world to its knees? When Paul was writing another letter to Christians at Colossae, he reminded them that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He reminded them that by Jesus, all things were created. He's the creator. He reminds them that in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. This is the almighty God, the creator God, the eternal God who has emptied and humbled himself. There was a moment in Jesus' ministry where one of his disciples asked him, Lord, just show us the Father, and that will be enough. And Jesus was kind of surprised that he said that. And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You're looking at him. You're looking at the one true God. He emptied himself and he humbled himself. Now generally, humility is not a quality that many people aspire to. It's not a desired trait. Just imagine yourself going in for an interview for a job. And we know that in the interview process, the person doing the interviewing may ask you a lot of different questions, but generally it it's all boils down to one question. Why should we hire you? So you're going in for the job interview, you sit down, and the first question they say is, so, so tell me something about yourself. Would you say, well, I'm pretty quiet, and I, I just do what I'm told? Probably not. We've been taught that this is our moment to shine. In an interview like this, you do not want to be shy, you do not want to be humble, you want to promote yourself. You're going to say something like, I'm a self-starter, I'm motivated, I'm a fast learner, I'm an achiever, I'm always trying to improve myself, I can add a lot of value to your company. You've got to make yourself seem better than any of the other candidates who are interviewing for that job in order to get hired. It's not a time for humility. It's a time to show them what you've got. Imagine for a moment Jesus in an interview like that. That would certainly be interesting, wouldn't it? Suppose um, the interviewer begins by asking, so Jesus, tell me something about yourself. What kind of experience do you have? And Jesus might answer, well, my experience is in service. The Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve. I've, I've washed feet. I've done some menial household chores. That's, that's pretty much my experience. So maybe the questions continue. So what else have you done? Maybe he would say what he said in John chapter 5. The works that the Father has given me to accomplish 
that's what I'm doing. I, I just do what I'm told. I'm doing what the Father has given me. In the Garden of Gethsemane, after the Passover meal, Jesus prays in agony. But he says, Father, not my will, but yours be done. He just comes to do what he's been told. Maybe the interviewer would, would say, so have you written anything? Do you have anything published? And Jesus would have to say, well, the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. I don't speak on my own authority. It's the Father in me who's doing this. So in other words, Jesus hasn't come up with anything original. He's simply speaking the words that God has always spoken for his people. Well, where do you live, Jesus? Well, right now I'm crashing on friends' couches. You know, birds have nests, foxes have holes, but the Son of Man doesn't have a place to lay his head. Well, you've got transportation, don't you? Well, I mostly like to walk. Today I borrowed a donkey to come into Jerusalem. Those are the kind of responses that Jesus would give because he had emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in the likeness of men. And then the apostle takes it even further and tells us that being found in human form, Jesus humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Crucifixion was intended to be the most humiliating, shameful, and excruciating way of putting somebody to death in the world of the Roman Empire. Naked and in public, people would come by to see those being crucified and they would mock and deride Jesus endlessly. I thought you were the Savior. Why can't you save yourself? Why don't you come down off the cross and show us who you were? Over and over again, Jesus is humbled. And here is where he really empties himself of every ounce of his life until Jesus finally cries out with a loud voice and gives up his spirit. His body is now empty of breath. It is empty of life. He has given everything for us. This is why Jesus came. This is why he was born into this world. This is why the word became flesh. It was to die. And by humbling himself, even to the point of death on the cross, he gives up his innocent life to redeem and atone for all of our sins. This, of course, is not the end of the story because this is why God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. A long time ago, the prophet Isaiah said this would happen. Isaiah chapter 45 the Lord says, turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone out in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear allegiance. God said he would do this, and God does this. And in the visions of Revelation, more people and angels and creatures than you can count are all saying with a loud voice, worthy is Christ to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing because he is the lamb who was slain, because he emptied himself and humbled himself to the point of death on the cross. That is why 
His name is above every other name. His name is the one at the top of the organizational chart. And everybody must acknowledge that he is the Lord, that he is the one true God, that he is the Christ. That's what it means to say that every knee will bow and every tongue confess. God has raised him. He has ascended into heaven he sits at the right hand of God with all authority in heaven and on earth. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Just reading these words lifts my spirits. It fills me with hope. It sends me to worship him. We don't worship our God because we are afraid of him. That's not why we bow down. We don't cower before him. We don't worship our God because we're trying to coax a blessing out of him. We worship him because he did this for us. Because of his great love. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. This is why we bow our knees. This is why we call him Lord, because we know that he has loved us like no one else ever has or ever will. Paul wrote these words to the Philippians for a reason. He wanted them not to do things from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility to consider other people to be more significant than themselves. He wanted them to not just look out for themselves, but look out for the interests of others. He was encouraging those Christians, and God's word here encourages us Christians too, to live the kind of life that Jesus did which was a life of service. The little things that nobody else wants to do, we do to help people. To humble ourselves and consider other people to be more important, to consider their needs to be more important than our own. To love other people the way that he has loved us, which is sacrificially. Not expecting anything in return. And why would we do these things? Because we know that humility can bring this world to its knees. And we want everybody to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And this is how it happens. Humility, being emptied of these things, being a servant, this is what brings the world to its knees. Not a virus, not a germ, but our Lord Jesus Christ, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let's join together in prayer. Gracious Lord, keep your scattered church in your mercy that she may endure the assaults of the evil one and remain faithful for the sake of those numbered within your kingdom and those who have not yet heard the gospel and been brought to faith. Almighty God, by your Spirit, 
you have gathered us as your church and promised that wherever two or three are together in your name, there you are in our midst. Do not allow stress or disaster to distract us from the particular vocations into which you have called us to serve in the church, home, and community. Grant to us every gift and blessing needful that we may honor our calling and serve you to the best of our ability. Almighty Lord, you have established the kingdom of the left and hold accountable all those who govern in this and every place. Guide our president, the members of Congress, the governor of this state, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they would serve nobly and wisely, pursuing the path of justice and protecting the citizens entrusted to them. Give them the wisdom and strength needed to bring our world out of crisis and back to stability. Merciful Lord, your grace is sufficient for all our needs, and you have promised to be the strength of the weary, the hope of those who fear, the healing of the ill, the fullness of those disabled, and the peace of all who are distressed. Hear us on behalf of our nation and the world suffering pandemic and isolation. We pray especially today, Lord, for Ray and Joanne, Dan and Joan, Jody and Bob and Kathy, Florence, Dave and Nova, Ed, Steve, Mardell, Cookie, Sean, Dave, Nikki, Lois, Ruth, and Mary. For Katie and Jamie, expecting babies soon. For those in our military, Kelly and Virgil, Samuel and Richie and Andrew, Christian, Nathan, Nick, Travis and Tyler, Devin, Colin and Gregory. We pray for Lisa and Christina and all others uh, involved in hospitals and doctor's offices and taking care of those who are sick. Keep them safe, Lord. Give them strength to do the, the work that you have given them. And Heavenly Father, it is your will that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of your Son by faith. Give your word success and deliver from error all those who live in darkness and fear, that they may walk in the light of the Lord Jesus and have confidence for the trials of this world and hope for the world to come. Holy Lord, as once your Son was welcomed with palms and hosannas, help us to welcome him who comes to us this day Guard us against false teaching and help us to discern truth from error, that none may be led astray or lost from the fellowship of your Son. Look with kindness on all who are separated from Holy Communion and comfort them with your promises, especially that they are never distant from your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Lord, for hearing all of our prayers. Thank you for our worship in our homes. And thank you, Lord, for that day when we know we will gather together once again as your people to give you thanks and praise to be among those who bow the knee and proclaim that you are Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.
Ride on, ride on in majesty. Hark all the tribes, Hosanna cry. O Savior, make, pursue thy road with palms and scattered garments strove. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. O Christ, thy triumphs now begin, o'er captive death and conquered sin. Ride on, ride on in majesty, the angel armies of the sky look down with sad and wandering eyes to see the approaching sacrifice. Ride on, ride on in majesty, thy last and fiercest strife is nigh. The Father on his sapphire throne awaits his own anointed Son. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. Bow thy meek head to mortal pain, then take, go God, thy power and reign. Thank you for worshiping with us today. You can stop by church anytime this week. We've got palm crosses. We've got portals of prayer that begin with April 1st. We have the current edition of the Lutheran Witness here for you to pick up. Those are no longer being mailed to your homes. These will all be available during regular office hours this week. This week is Holy Week. The service for Thursday will be on YouTube by noon on Thursday. On Good Friday, we will have two live-streamed worship services, one at noon, where we read through the Passion of our Lord, the other at night, where after the sanctuary is covered in darkness and we have heard the words of our Lord from the cross, we will hear the sound of the tomb being closed. And we will remember that moment when our Lord gave up his life for us. Easter Sunday, we will also have live-streamed worship services. I think I'm going to do something at sunrise, but you'll need to figure out what time that is. And then we'll have our uh, festival service at 11 o'clock here in the sanctuary, live-streamed to you so you can worship with us from your homes and with your families. Thanks again for your support of our ministry. Thank you for all of your prayers. Please call if there is anything I can do, any needs that you have, any way that I can serve you. Thanks for washing your hands and washing the feet of those around you. Loving our neighbors the way Christ loved us. Take care and God bless.